Hello, and welcome back to another Top 5 exclusive right here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I'm Alan. And I'm Ed. And today on Top 5, we shall be talking about our Top 5 Sword Fights, as Ed is nicely showing us. <laughs> few things. Uh, well, actually, before we get into the list, we have to make it known that um, we did have to make one exception uh, for this list. We did not include the lightsaber battles from Star, Star Wars films. We're keeping it to swords. Yes, swords. swords. Real weapons, pretty much. Metal, like this one. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, did you want to start off first? Sure, sure. So my number five is uh, the oldest on my list, uh, The Adventures of Robin Hood, ah, uh, yes. back from the 30s, uh, directed by Michael Curtiz. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's the famous famous climactic battle between um, Errol Flynn as Robin Robin Hood and Basil Rathbone as Sir Guy of Gisborne. Right. Um, it is, uh, you know, an epic epic scene they fight up and down the stairs in the tower mm -hmm. you, the, what's really awesome is you see like uh, their shadows on the wall fighting mm -hmm. too it's very epic in scale I'll, and it's amazing how many movies have copied that movie as far as an like an action movie go he was like one of the first action heroes oh yes absolutely um i do want to talk more about that film but we'll probably talk about it a little down the line so little hint on what's to come uh, let's move on to my number five. Uh, my number five sword fright uh, is from a film that was uh, released in 1998. I only include this one because it was fun and it was high on the sexy meter for me. And mm. it was the sword fight between Antonio Banderas and Catherine Zeta-Jones in The Mask of Zorro. <laughs> um, not the best Zorro film. It's a fun movie. But yeah, absolutely. It's a fun movie. Fun action comedy. Um, the chemistry between Antonio Banderas and Catherine Zeta-Jones was great. Uh, I mean, that was a lot of the reason why they made a sequel is because they were so great together. Um, uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins is the world's most believable Spaniard. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> but that sword fight, I mean, was all about them just like kind of having this sort of dance and playing around and like sizing each other up. And I mean... I mean, how can you not include it when you have Catherine Zeta-Jones ending up topless at the end of the sword fight? So that was it. Number five, Mask of Zorro. I, I, like, the, I like the cut of your jib there. <laughs> so my number four, we're going to go to a, probably a, a much more well-known modern one. Um, and, of course, it's from Kill Bill Volume 1, mm. where you got the bride versus everybody. Yeah. The, what is, <laughs> everybody. is it the Go-Go... Go-Go Valaf? No. Crazy 88. Crazy 88. Yeah. Scott, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, mean, I mean, yes, I know it's actually paying tribute to a lot of other Chop Saki movies. It's pulling from a lot of different things. But I'm going to give it props for sheer... Sheer balls and sheer length. Mm -hmm. It's long, it's bloody, and it's super fun. Yes, absolutely. Su super bloody, super fun, uh, super energetic. Um, again, I will probably have to talk about this oh, a little man. bit more. We should um, coordinate better. Yeah, we should coordinate better. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on to my number four. Um, my number four is from a film that was released in 2000. Uh, we're going to stay in the martial arts world. And it is the climactic battle scene between Michelle Yeoh and Zhang Ziyi in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Thought about this one myself. Yes, you have Zhang Ziyi, um, character who's wielding this magical jade sword, and Michelle Yeoh, who's pretty much doing everything everything that she can to take her down. She takes a sword, she fights, um, Zhang Ziyi chops it up. She grabs like another sword, fights, chops it up, and the battle just rages. It's so well done, um, so energetic between the two. And then just to add on, um, Chow Yun-Fat shows up and then um, him and Zhang Ziyi have the um, sort of poetic, artistic battle um, amongst the trees. Uh, really kind of a change from what just happened between Michelle Yeoh and Zhang Ziyi. Uh, great sequence uh, of events in, in a very uh, well-made movie. It's a lot of lovely wire foo in that movie. It's, you know, I'm not a, the biggest fan of wire foo choreography, but in that film, uh, with the context of that film, I totally bought into it. So. Yeah, I dig it. Good, good choice. Yes. Um, well, along those lines, uh, um, well, I, oh, sorry, getting a little out of order. My number three, <laughs> let's let's move on to my number three, is actually from the 70s, uh, from a movie called The Duelists, directed oh. by Ridley Scott. Oh. Um, there is a sword duel in the middle. Now, I, 
for those of you who don't know, this isn't necessarily the most talked about Ridley Scott movie ever, but it is mm-hmm. super good. Mm-hmm. It stars Harvey Keitel and Keith Carradine uh, as a pair of uh, soldiers in the 1800s during the Napoleonic Wars, and they end up fighting... They, they end up starting a duel that lasts 15 years, hmm. and it's based on a real incident. These guys, bas- they, they duel with pistols at, at some points. They duel with swords in the middle in this really epic sword fight where they end up exhausted. It, it rivals they live as far as like just wearing themselves <laughs> out. Just going on and on. Yeah, and, and it on. is super good. And the, the, mo- the movie's all about emotion and, and what these, like, these two are, you know... At at odds for a long time. Excellent movie. You you won me over when you told me that Harvey Keitel wields a sword in battles. Yep, that's, and a big mustache. That's oh, and a big mustache. Yeah, I'm in. I'm renting that movie right now. <laughs> uh, moving on to my number three. Um, you had already mentioned it. It is Kill Bill Volume One: The Bride versus the Crazy Eighty Eights. Um, yeah, I mean, usually in films where you have one character going against an entire army of people. It's definitely, you know, something that I don't really buy a lot of the time. You know? <laughs> but in this film, it I can totally bought with the cartoony sort of style of it. Uh, really well made uh, from the scene where she's battling. And then when they go up to the upstairs room and they're battling with like the blue background and it's just the shadows. Very, very cool. Very stylish. And then proceeding on from that, uh, you have the battle between uh, her and Oren Ishii, played by Lucy Liu, um, in the back with, with the snow and, and the slow motion and everything. It's really cool, very stylish, very well made. Um, and it's just straight up awesome, you know? Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's super fun. Yeah. I said it before. It's a good, good choice. I know. Like, a lot of people complain like, oh, you know, Volume 2 didn't have enough action. I think, you know, Volume 1... It was front-loaded. Yeah, it was definitely front-loaded and made up for everything that, you know, Volume 2 didn't have, so... So, well, on to my number two, I had to get a little wire foo in myself. So my number two pick is from Hero, mm. uh, you know, directed by, uh, screw up the name, is it Zhang Yimou? Yimou? Zhang Yimou, I yeah, think. Zhang Yimou, like that, yeah, Zhang uh, Yimou, you know. <laughs> uh, and it's the, there's a, a great many sword fights in that movie, and it, it, mm. I actually like this movie better than Crouching Tiger myself. Really? Yeah, I, I think it's terrific. Mm. I feel like Crouching Tiger introduced the West to wire foo, and this movie perfected it. Oh. But this scene in particular is the one between Nameless, that's, that's Jet Li's character, and Sky mm-hmm. in the temple. It's the slow motion one where they have that wonderful music being uh, playing in the background, uh, 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 instrumentalist playing a, that string I- instrument, mm-hmm. and while they they play through the rain, there's a bunch of slow motion droplets of water, and it's artistic and beautiful. Mm-hmm. I've listened to that score I don't know how many times. It's it I I love that movie. That, now I may be wrong, but is that the scene that was in black and white? And color. It and color goes oh, back it's both. because okay. it's portraying the battle between their in their minds, kind mm-hmm. of. Yeah, I mean that that is a very good film. I don't know if I would put it, you know, as high or higher than Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, but I mean it's give or take. We'll know. we'll There's sort of fight over it later. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, moving on to my number two. Uh, again, you had mentioned it already. It's from 1938. It is the climactic battle in the Adventures of Robin Hood. I mean, I, I mentioned it before we went on screen. Um, uh, Douglas Fairbanks was Robin Hood first, but Errol Morris is er- the- Errol Flynn. <laughs> Errol Morris. Wouldn't it be awesome to see Errol Morris, the director, as Robin Hood? <laughs> Errol Flynn. God damn it. Errol Flynn is the best version of Robin Hood. Um, like you said, it set the standard for those kind of action-packed adventure films. Uh, Errol Flynn, there was a reason why he was, you know, the great swashbuckler that he was known for yeah. being back in the day. It's interesting to think that for a film, you know, back in 19, was it, 38, it was so high intent, like high um, energy and intense and they're fighting on the stairs they're fighting um in the castle there's you know the shadows like you mentioned uh they're throwing candles over they're battling on the ground up every up and down it, it was just fantastic uh a great film uh very rewatchable over and over again and that fight scene never gets old yes so well on to my number one um is uh from a movie directed by michael Caton jones rob roy Mm-hmm. Starring uh, the irrepressible Liam Neeson, mm-hmm. and uh, starring uh, also Eric Roth or t- t- sorry Tim Roth. <laughs> wow, now it's <laughs> my team to sure. screw it up. <laughs> uh, awesome, Tim Roth in his uh, Oscar-nominated role, um, and it's the climactic battle between those two. What's yes. great, and what's great about that is 
that it's in the case of Rob Roy's character, he it's a force of will that he's staying in it. He's he's not the best swordsman. He's 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 outclassed, but right. he's staying there just because he's got to get payback. Right. He, he it, the, this guy has taken his country, raped his wife, yeah. done everything Just to everything. Yeah, terrible to him. And it, it, it's it's he you know it means this sword fight means something to mm -hmm. him. Yeah. Um. This is gonna be a short list to vote on because my number one is Rob Roy Sweet. as well. And I mean the thing about this that scene between Tim Roth and Liam Neeson is it's not one of those like choreographed fight scenes where it looks like a dance. They're like really going at it and every time Liam Neeson tries to attack Tim Roth, Tim Roth pretty much like guards and moves around and like slices him and he goes around behind his back and slices him around yeah. his stomach. He pretty much has Liam Neeson in the palm of his hand and then Liam Neeson being the badass that he is Take, takes his oh. takes the sword in his hand and pulls it away yeah. and then ah oh, boom right down like from his shoulder down to yeah. his stomach. Holy crap. I mean what a that's, man. That and is man. Uh, well, I, I actually remember when this movie came out Siskel and Ebert reviewed it and I remember Roger Ebert even said he goes you know, I thought I'd seen every sword fight. Mm -hmm. I thought I was done with this genre, mm -hmm. but I'm. But this this movie showed me something new. Exactly. Um, I per heresy here. I personally like this movie more than Braveheart. That's certainly can be just debated myself. either way. Um, but they're both they're both great. Okay, so. and then b before we end this, we have to throw in our super honorable mention yes. in that it's kind of above the list. Yeah. Which is the sword fight from the Princess Bride. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Before you send your hate mail, the reason we didn't talk about it simply because we don't need to tell you. Right. Right. Like Princess I, Bride. It's the the internet is filled with love for that. It is. It is justifiably great. It, it would probably yes. be our number one. We didn't we didn't know we'd still have a, a same number one? But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a great. Carol was in Montoya. Yeah, it's 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 fabulous. Oh, it's so great! Like the the, the scene between Inigo Montoya and Wesley, where they're like yeah. sword fighting. Oh, you didn't know? I'm actually left handed. Left -handed so then, am I. Yes. yes, it's and then the final scene between Inigo Montoya and the guys. Again, we don't have to tell you how awesome that is. Yes, it is awesome, and that's why we're mentioning it because it's it's above this list pretty much. Yeah. So. That does it for our top five sword fights. There are a lot out there. Um, please let your favorite be known at MacGuffinPodcast.com, and we will catch you guys next time. See ya.